All right. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to dual boot Pop OS and, uh, and Windows 10 if you already installed Windows 10. Um, and it's not that complicated, but there are a few things to take note of. For example, um, Pop OS doesn't use Grub; it uses it uses System uh, S System D boot. Um, so uh, the best thing to do is to go to this uh, guide that you can find on GitHub. GitHub. I'll leave the um, uh, the link in the description. But in this video, I'm just going to uh, to do it basically. Um, so what you have to do is very easy. And by the way, I assume you already have some kind of ba you know basic computer knowledge, like you know what this is, what partitions are, what fucking gigabyte is and stuff. So um, and let's uh, go ahead and get started. So first of all, of course, what you have to do is you have to shrink the volume of your drive where your Windows install is located. And I wanted to give this much to uh, uh, Pop OS, or like at least th this is the amount of um, storage I don't need. So now I'm going to install Pop OS, and uh, this is the first time of me doing it. But uh, you know, I, I wanted to check if it was going to be the same as like every um, Ubuntu uh, install, and it is not. So that is a very um, I'm very glad that I looked it up for a second. So now I, there are a few things that, that uh, basically um, you know go different. So uh, yeah. First of all, what I, what I want to show is that I am going to use Gparted, and this is what I always do, by the way, for every uh, uh, thing basically where I have to deal with um, uh, with the operating systems because I'm a I'm the type of guy that uses multiple operating systems at once uh, because I like that. So what I do is I have this USB stick, um, and uh, most people use Belina Etcher to have a bootable USB stick. I use Ventoy because you can actually boot into multiple um, ISOs, and the two that we're going to need for this video are Gparted. So you can just look up Gparted ISO. Uh, here, you can just download it. And Fento, you can just look it up, install it on an uh, empty USB stick. Uh, and that's all you have to do, basically. And, and then, of course, you have to get the Pop OS um, ISO ready. And that's all you have to do. So now let's reboot into our Fento USB stick. And the first place where we got to go is uh, going to be uh, Gparted, because we're going to start with the partitioning. So we're restarting at the moment. I'm pressing the F12 key, because that allows me to go to the boot menu. And here I'm selecting USB partition 2. So as you can see, you can already see Pop OS here, but this is on a SATA SSD uh, that I have. Uh, and I already, I already have Pop OS there, but I decided, you know, I want this on my main um, NVMe drive. So uh, don't bother the every, everywhere when it says like SATA SSD, that's just something else. And by the way, it's best to make a backup. I'm saying this before I go into, uh, you know, Gparted. It's best to make a backup of everything before doing anything in Gparted, or uh, it's, it's just best to make a backup always. And um, also disconnect all your SATA drives. I'm uh, I'm actually taking a small risk here, but uh, just so I mentioned it, I'm not uh, responsible for anything that you do wrong here. Um, and uh, this is just advice. I'm basically just doing advice. It's best to read the guide and uh, just know you're on your own when it comes to installing uh, uh, these things. So when you're in Gparted, just press enter each time because that uh, applies the default settings. You don't need to change anything here. Uh, all right. So now what we're going to need is, as you can see here, we see the partitions here. You can select the drive. So as you can see, I'm going to do it on this drive, the NVMe drive. This is where I will do a boot. So here you can see the EFI system partition, and what that is, is it is a partition that uh, your computer needs to boot um, into a system. And you can actually use one uh, EFI partition for both Windows and uh, Linux, or uh, and Pop OS. But the problem here is that um, Pop OS needs, like, uh, I believe, 512 to 1 gigabyte of, um, <coughs> of, um, uh, EF, of EFI partition space. And Windows, by default, sets, sets 100 uh, megabytes, which is obviously not enough. So, um, uh, the first thing we are going to have to do is go to this unallocated space because as you can see this is the Microsoft data space so this is your Windows install and then um, we have unallocated space here so first I'm going to click on new and by the way for people who don't know uh, this is actually how your drive is partitioned it matters the order matters right so uh, if you leave space here so this is this is this right if you leave space here now if I create add it will create a partition from here to here and I can actually resize this here but if I do this and there's space here I can't resize this one so what I always do is leave a little bit of space on both sides we're going to have to create three partitions uh, um, and two are required and one is optional the first one that's required is we are going to have to create a new uh, EFI system partition but this time it's for pop OS right you can't delete your Microsoft system partition um, but you can and, and you can't uh, use the EFI system partition for both pop OS and Windows so we're just going to have to create a new one so uh, we're going to need it's going to have like let's say no let me actually do around a gig maybe a little bit more one gigabyte of, or so yeah around one gigabyte of space and we're going to have some free space for, uh, after it um, you can also just drag it like this or use this but yeah so let's now let me actually do maybe something like this now let me just keep it like this that's nice actually all right then um, this is the first partition. It's going to have to be an EFI partition, so it needs to be FAT32, as you can see here, um, because EFI partitions are FAT32. Uh, you can all, I'm talking too, way too much. You can see this EFI partition is also FAT32. Um, the partition name, you can just call it, let's call it uh, EFI part partition pop, pop OS. Um, and let's give it a label. Let's call it uh, EFI pop OS. Let's do this. 
and then edit. So as you can see, we got a little bit of space before, so we can actually uh, increase our um, uh, NTFS partition later if we want. And then I have the EFI pop, part, uh, pop OS partition, which is going to be one gigabyte. Then we have unallocated space here. Now I'm going to create the ext4 partition, which is just going to be our pop OS partition. So we are, this is where most of the files are going to be. Um, and we can leave no space before it. So let's just do this. And this is going to be around four gigs. Maybe make it a little bigger because I want that. And then create a swap space, Linux swap. And what swap is, is swap is basically, I'm explaining it very bad because I don't know too much about it, but it's basically extra RAM. So let's just call it swap. Um, so I create 20 gigs because I have 16 and yeah, I just like to have 20 gigabytes of swap space. So yeah, as you can see now, I have a little bit of unallocated, I have my Windows um, partition here. I have some unallocated space just to be sure. Then I have my uh, EFI partition for um, for uh, Pop OS, and then here I have I have the um, uh, ext4 partition for Pop OS, and then I have my Linux swap. Okay, so yeah, I have my swap partition. Now, when you're ready, you can just uh, click on this um, check mark, and you just have to wait. So we just wait over here. And it's done, so we can click close, and we can actually exit Gparted right now. So double click, and then reboot, and then we're going to go to our Ventoy. Press enter. Then we're going to go to our Ventoy uh, again to boot Pop OS ISO from uh, the USB. Let's go to Pop OS over here. Boot into normal mode. Try and install or install Pop OS. Take some time, but that's all right. <coughs> all right, we're in Pop OS. This is Pop OS, isn't it beautiful? Yeah. So um, as you can see, it automatically opens up the install Pop OS. I'm sure if you're watching this, you already installed Pop OS or another um, GNU slash Linux um, uh, OS before. Uh, so let's just go through the installing process. First, we sele select the English language, then select the keyboard you are gonna want to use. For me, that's this one. And then this is important, don't click on clean install, click on custom. And now we're just going to select the things that we already did. Make sure you don't click on any other um, uh, drives that you have. Make sure you click on the drive that you actually want to use. So for me, it's this one, the uh, 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 NVMe. And now first, let's uh, click on the FAT32 partition we made, which is going to be a, um, you know, that's going to be a uh, uh, the EFI partition. So click on use and then use as boot and then boot slash EFI. Um, and you can format it if, you're, if you want. I'm not going to, going to format it because it was already formatted. Then we have this ext4 partition, which is going to be obviously the most of the stuff that we had. And use this as a root. And ext4, of course. And then we have the swap partition here, so use a swap. And now you can just click on erase and install. Double check that you have everything. You have the right drive. Don't touch your NTFS partitions. Um, and don't touch your EFI partition, That's of your, uh, which is for your Windows install, which is going to be around uh, 100 MP, uh, megabytes if you didn't change it and just left everything as default while installing Windows. So click on erase and install. Then just type in your oh yeah this isn't I chose the wrong I chose the <laughs> I chose the wrong uh, keyboard layout I think oh that sucks actually oh um, where's the Y shit here oh shit bro what that's crazy what, what what kind of layout is this where's the N um yeah so let's just do this choose an account password damn okay wait we gotta go back now okay okay oh, oh shit yeah Quit. Okay, we gotta do this again. I'm just going to fast forward through it now. This is what I mean. This is what you gotta like, uh, check everything you're doing. This is what it's supposed to do. Yeah, this is right. Choose the right one. Yep. Let's do this. Or no, actually. Let's just, let me just leave it like that. Let me give my password real quick. Um. Yep. And now it's installing, so I'm going to fast forward through this. All right, continue setting up. Then we have to go to um, restart device and we're going to have to boot into, now not into our USB, but uh, if it's correct, we'll actually see um, the partition of uh, Pop OS here, right here, this one for the NVMe drive. So click on this one, and uh, if all went well, we'll see Pop OS, fresh Pop OS install. And it seems like it. 
Yep. So let's let me just enter my password real quick. And that's beautiful. All right. Now you'll just see some basic um, some basic settings that you can just change. Um, Oh no, oh, let's get rid of that. I'm going to blur this out. Uh, and by the way, I have an ethernet cable, so I don't know why I'm doing this, but uh, you know. So let's just turn that on real quick. Let me blur this out real quick. All right, I'm gonna do this later. And start using PopOS. So now we're into PopOS. But of course, we have two um, uh, uh, two EFI partitions. Of course, we just want to boot into one. We don't want to press F12 each time. So the question is now, how are we going to be able to select what to boot in each time we start up our computer? Well, to do that, we'll actually have to go to the scary terminal and type the following, LSBLK. And what you see now is you can see uh, all your drives. Um, and of course, we know that uh, I have everything installed on this NVMe. And what you can see is you see this... Uh, every partition that we have, so we can see this partition here, it has 100 megabytes. And um, uh, what was 100 megabytes again, of course, that was uh, the uh, EFI partition that Windows made. And this one gig, as you can see, is the EFI partition that PopOS uses. Now, we're going to have to do the following. First of all, we want to uh, mount the um, uh, the partition that is uh, the, uh, uh, fucking the EFI partition of uh, Microsoft. So, uh, first of all, by the way, you have to identify first. So, I'm doing it by uh, uh, looking at the... Uh, EFI partition that's the same size as what I know that my Microsoft EFI partition is. Um, you can also uh, install this program. I read this in the guide. I haven't tried this yet. So it's called OS Prover, I think. So I don't know exactly what it does. I'm going to find out now. Um, and then you have to write this, I think. Yeah, yeah. All right. So now you can see the place. And as you can see, it's the same partition. Uh, it's P1. And here you can see P1 is the 100 megabytes one. So you know that's what, where the EFI file is. Um, and now what we have to do is we have to mount this um, uh, uh, this uh, this um, partition. So what you can do is you can just write sudo mount and then just paste this and then uh, slash mnt. So now you got it mounted. Let's do cd slash mount and then ls. And here you can see EFI. Right? Then you have to uh, change the directory into EFI. So we're in EFI. Let's click LS. And you can see boot and Microsoft. And we want to go into Microsoft. So um, what we are going to do is we are basically going to copy this Microsoft partition um, with a, a command. I'm going to explain what the command does real quick. So basically, um, what we have to write is uh, sudo cp copy, then the flag a, x, and a means stands for archive. And it basically preserves all the file attributes. Uh, and x makes sure that uh, the copy process doesn't like cross file system boundaries. And then um, Microsoft, and then boot EFI, you know, because that's the thing that's uh, where our uh, EFI folder thing is, and then EFI. Now click enter, and it's done. Um, and you can check it by uh, typing sudo ls boot EFI, um, EFI. And this is where Microsoft should be. So as you can see, you can see Microsoft um, right here. So now what we're going to have to do is we're going to exit out of our terminal and go to power off. And then we're actually going to have to go into our bias. And this is different for everybody. Uh, and the key that you have to press is different. For me, it's delete, I believe. Oh, I have to turn my PC on, I forgot. <laughs> so let's turn my PC on and click delete to go into my BIOS. Clicking on delete, but it doesn't do anything for some reason. Oh, here we go. So we're in the BIOS now and we need to put the pop OS at the top. And of course, a data because this is the drive. Now, uh, once you have this uh, on the top, so as the first entry, click save and exit, click on yes. And then, let's hope that it works. Okay, and we're restarting. And one thing that's quite annoying is you have to spam your spacebar to get the menu to pop up. I don't know how to do this automatically. Um, I'm sure there is a way to stop. But like you have to, um, yeah, spam your spacebar. Oh, wait, it didn't work. Yeah, so as you can see here, now you can actually boot into either Pop OS or Windows. And um, yeah, it isn't the prettiest solution. I'm sure there are better solutions. Um, so now if I press Windows, I can boot into Windows. And it works just fine, as you can see.
So yeah, that's how to um, how to use uh, how to do boot. Thanks for watching.